Tom Constantino, Brandon Braga, Chad Coleman. <laughs> Chad Coleman, Amy Winters, Jessica Zora, Mark Jackson, Jay Lee, Peter Macon, and Emmy Johnson Jones. Backstage with these guys watching the footage and the previews of the upcoming episodes, and them like freaking out the way you guys were freaking out. It was great. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Hell yeah! Come on! Yeah. The jumping, the jumping on in. Uh, I think everyone in this room is a fan of the Oracle, um, and I'm so curious. For fans, what do you think they would be surprised to learn about the actual making of the show? That we don't see how dope that is when we shoot it. We're just sort of in our own little sort of bubbles and pockets, and then the post production and the music and all that comes together. We get to see it like you get. Yeah. We're big fans too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every episode, we're just, uh, you know, green screens. Every episode has a different world that we end up getting to see, and it's just as exciting for us to kind of see the world that we're living in and we're acting in for so long. Yeah, you know what I think people would probably find fascinating? I know it sounds kind of weird, but it, our eye line situation. Like yeah. We have different tape marks all over for different characters, and his eye line is different than mine. And, That's what I was just saying. And it's just it's a weird thing, but I feel like you Unless you're on the bridge or on the step with us, you wouldn't know that. Yeah, I said that to Peter just now backstage. I said, look at him, look at that X. <laughs> Man, look at that X. I'm like, okay, Boris is here, and John's over here, and I'm looking at that. Right, grab that. Penny, just uh, said backstage after we watched that, she was like, gosh, I want to be in this show. <laughs> That's how we kind of feel sometimes, because it's such a surprise when we see it. Look, right. pretty nifty. Uh, I hope that answers the question if you're going to see the Pterodon fighter again. I want to see Clyde in a jet fighter. <laughs> I do. Well, uh, I'm not sure if Seth wants to uh, chime in. It's hard because I don't see him. Oh, you know what? There he is. Uh, you see me now? Yeah. We can see yeah. You. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, know. one thing that might, uh, people might find interesting is that, you know, we shoot the whole, so in this case, we shot the whole season at once, so say the first half of the day, we may be shooting episode two, the second half of the day, we may be shooting episode five. It's the most extreme example of this is uh, something that I know Tom has, uh, has tweeted about, and I've mentioned as well, um, was in the uh, this week's episode with uh, the great Dolly Parton. Um, Woo! Yeah, Dolly Parton in space! Um, it was during the height of COVID, so obviously everyone was, was in their own cities, and we built the cabin set and basically cut it in half. So half of it went to Nashville for Dolly, and the other half was in LA for, uh, with, uh, for us so we could shoot Rena Owen. Rena flew to Nashville with us to do her scenes with Dolly, but there was really only time to do that, so we flew back to LA and shot Havina's half of the scene, um, with uh, with a double for, for the back of Dolly's head, and essentially blended the two together. So when you watch that scene, you're uh, you're you're seeing two actors perform um, a great distance apart from each other, and it's it's amazing how seamlessly it came together. Yes. 
I'm, I'm, I was gonna say that. I was gonna say that exact thing. I, I, all of us. So. I wish I met Dolly. There's a little bit of an echo. I don't know if you guys. But uh, as going into, there's gonna be fans out there who have, or people who have never seen the Orville before, and know that the Orville New Horizons on Hulu season three. Are there certain episodes that people need to watch if they've never seen the show before, but can start with New Horizons? All of them. <laughs> I, can, I can give you a list. I can give you a list if you want. Oh, good. <laughs> Go for it. Tom, Tom Costantino, please pipe in because uh, it, it has my conscience. Oh, I think, uh, or you can start and I'll fill you in. Uh, you, you probably want to watch uh, About a Girl. Yep. Uh, um, yes. Majority Rule. Um, Identity Parts 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Mad Idolatry. Yeah, Mad Idolatry, like the uh, season finale. Um, nothing Left on Earth Excepting Fishes. Uh, probably a Happy Refrain. Yeah. Happy Refrain. Happy refrain. Okay, Seth, that would be everything. Sanctuary. <laughs> Sanctuary, yeah. Which one shouldn't they watch? That's the <laughs> uh, I'm going to move on to the next thing. and uh, so I'm going to read a little of this to make sure I do this right. And I, I really want to know everyone's answer to this. In a recent episode, Scott Grimes', Scott Grimes character, Gordon Malloy, was stuck in the past. A great, great episode. episode. Great great episode. Great. Okay, by the way, Scott Grimes is actually more correct. Oh, I like, I like messing up. It's, it's good. Uh, uh, and started family, 10 years ago, started family. Captain Mercer and Kelly Grayson followed Union rules, went back in time to bring Gordon back and erase the alternate timeline. Uh, for everyone, do you personally agree with the captain's decision, or do you think he should have brought Gordon and his family to the future and risked the timeline? Oh, that's good. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Say it again. Oh. You, want, you want me to pipe in here? Yeah, definitely. By, by the way, my apologies. I would so love to be there, guys. I'm, I'm prepping this. this yeah, tent. you'd love to. <laughs> uh, otherwise, I would uh, I would be there in person. But please enjoy that too. It's going to be very good. Um, yeah, you know that's I, I I follow a lot of what people say on social media and a lot of what they respond to. Um, and there was there's a lot of you know why the hell did they did they have to? Uh, there's, there's two things I, I are, are worth answering. Why couldn't they bring Gordon back? Well, the one thing I haven't seen anyone mention is that when Gordon went back, you know, as you recall in Lasting Impressions last season, Laura was with this guy, Greg. Presumably, she had a family with that guy. So Gordon coming in kind of wiped out that timeline and whatever family, whatever children she would have had with Greg. So really, when uh, and Kelly and the crew and Tala come in, they're, they're really restoring um, this timeline that, that probably occurred. Now the other question is, why wouldn't they just walk out and, uh, and leave Gordon ignorant of his fate? Um, earlier in the episode we established that time travel is, of course in all of sci-fi, time travel is very dangerous, but somehow you always get it done. <laughs> and, uh, and so it's, it would have been an easier and safer thing to just pluck Gordon out. So I think what their intention was, was to kind of guilt him into coming with them so they didn't have to take that risk. So that was kind of the logic behind, behind all that. And I, I, I'm going to jump in. I'll tell you, this is Jay Lee. If, if I fall in love and I get trapped on a planet and I'm, I got a family and y'all come back and try to pluck me, I'm blasting. Stay with the back. Oh, okay. hey, the back. You walk away. Listen, we can have to do that over and over and over again. I don't care. I got one of them phases, man. Hey, unlimited. Block, block, block. And you got families <laughs> on the planet to live the universe. You got me. But I do, I do get why we went back and got. But. I think, I think the emotionally hardest things on TV are sometimes the ones we want to watch. So I, 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 I agree that we, you know he should have been brought back, but not with his family. No, I just, I would absolutely say for the greater good of the many, because it's just, it would be for one family, but the possibility, the negative ramifications could affect millions of people. So you don't take that risk. That's, that's my thought. I agree. I, I, 
I, I would have brought him back because I think for every change that you make in the past, you are um, essentially affecting initially 400 other people, and then that 400 people would be affecting, you know, ex potentially 400 each. So then there would be things that are now in the future that are present that are working that would never happen. But could so you potentially I could you potentially put Scotty like the egg salad sandwich? Could you potentially like put Gordon Malloy forward and have a Gordon like three months in the future, like the egg salad sandwich, and have that Gordon and then like we leave the the, the, the Gordon in twenty twenty like whatever <laughs> behind. <laughs> Peter Macon texts me at 4.30 in the morning, not at Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm testing, sense. testing <laughs> the, the, the boundaries of quantum physics, testing, texting at the 4.30 yeah, yeah. morning. Are you awake? You up? Hey, what you doing? Hey, what, you, what, you, what, you, what you thinking about? Are you writing? Are you playing Scrabble by yourself? What you doing, Seth? Because <laughs> now you can voice text, and that's what I do now. Hi, Seth. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Pete. I'm going to throw a question. What day is it? I was going to say, let's throw a question uh, for the producers. Um, can you sort of talk about what went into the name of, of, because now it's the Orville New Horizons. I'm just curious what went into the name change. And also, um, what did the move to Hulu do for the show? So? Um, well, you know, New Horizon, the, the idea of adding a, a subtitle was actually my, my, my boss, Dana Walden at Disney, suggested, you know, this thing is, is, has made a real uptick in, in um, scope and in quality and gravitas. Why not add a, a subtitle? I thought it was kind of a cool idea. New Horizons was kind of the first idea that we all came up with. Um, and, you know, the move to Hulu, first of all, I cannot say enough good things about Hulu. Uh, these are these are just some of the most amazing people that I've worked with. Um, from the mar marketing division all the way to, to, to operations, they've just been amazing, and they've really taken care of this show. Um, the show. The thing that, that really made a difference to me was just pace. If you if you shoot a movie and you want to linger on an actor's face or linger on an emotional moment, you have that time within reason. With, it, with broadcast television, um, you know, even with all the money in the world, they, you're, you're really locked into that 43 minutes. You're, you're still cutting for the you know, fabrics off your commercial. And so you may have a scene that just plays great and has emotional resonance and makes you feel something, and you still gotta cut three minutes out of it. And, and that just got really frustrating with all the work that we were putting in. That was really the, the main reason that, that this move, uh, I think, was right for our show. You guys like it on Hulu? <laughs> Penny, that, Penny, that was very suggestive. Yeah, I'm just saying, <laughs> yeah. ask again, ask, ask again. Hey, baby, you like it on Hulu? <laughs> No one was gonna say no the way you asked it. No, I don't like it. I don't like it anymore. Please stop. No, no. You like it on Hulu, don't you, baby? <laughs> uh, for everyone, um, I'm curious which scene or sequence ended up being the real pain in the A because of whatever reason. Uh, and can you share? I think it was the dance sequence. I, yeah, it was, because we were all coming back from COVID, and we were wearing those masks, and we had to rehearse, and then we had to pull away and let the choreographers show us what to do, and people didn't know how long they could touch you, or how sorry, close they could come to you, so that was a pain in the butt. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> do you have anything to say about this? <laughs> Which, uh, uh, we can't, I can't tell you. Just, okay, picture 9,000 feet above <laughs> Picture, we can't tell you. Full foam rubber prosthetic. <laughs> Four hours of application. Yeah, we can only tease it through. He's teasing, just, he's teasing you right now. 5 a.m. call, 9,000 feet above sea level. That's all, I'll leave you at that. That's all we can give you. That's all we can give you. <laughs> 
I will say from a production standpoint, uh, I think uh, the mop in the courtroom scene uh, with Topa having to go back, thank God Brian is a great director. We had all these uh, dailies to go back into and sort of recreate that whole thing seamlessly. Right, yeah. I think that was probably the most challenging, but also the most rewarding, but uh, right, right. And also kind of the longest gestation time too. I had, a, uh, there was a day where I had just, like a, no, I wasn't naked, but I had pages <laughs> of science techno battle. And I remember before we started shooting set, he was like, yeah, sorry, man. Yeah. <laughs> I had all these speeches about, you know, Jaylee, my heart bleeds for you. <laughs> I have to do it all on set first. Hey, this isn't oh, a competition. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I was answering the question. I know this is a competition. No, but I agree. Party. It's hard. It's very hard. No, it's, it's, it's Play nice. Play nice. Play nice. <laughs> uh, Jessica and Annie, I'd like to hear some answers. Yeah, um... You know, everyone always asks about my hair and makeup process because it's long and it's from the eyelids up and the wig and the ears and the nose. Um, but honestly, I think everyone here can, can attest to this too, is I fall asleep in the makeup chair while they put everything on so I like get two extra hours of sleep. And as long as, our days might have been long and the, we always like kind of make fun of going on the bridge, but like, I miss going on the bridge now. You know what I mean? Like we we all have so much fun doing this show and what the, the storylines that we get to bring to life and bring to the screen for you guys and for us to learn from and shine light on certain things is a really beautiful beautiful thing. And uh, yeah, I mean it's like anything we do. Some days you go to work and you're like, oh wow, I, you know, I want to sleep in today. You know, it doesn't. We all have that, but. At the end of the day, we get to do something that we love. We get to work with amazing writers and producers and directors and get to tell stories that touch people, we hope. Yeah. Um, so I don't, there's, of course, there's probably been days where I'm like, oh, you know, that was a pain. But at the end of the day, there's so much good on the show and we have such an amazing cast and we all have so much fun and feed off each other. Like, coming here and having to do press all day with these guys is like, Awesome. I'm like, I can't believe this is my job. This is insane because it's so fun. So, um, all in all, I know you probably wanted some like dirt or me to be like, this is shitty, but it's, we just have a really good time and we hope that know. you guys are I'll, I'll take care of it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you the inquiry version. No. <laughs> I'm being I'm totally so joking. I know you are. And Loca locations, say, yeah. locations can be difficult because uh, we go to a lot of planets that have a Southern Californian climate. And uh, <laughs> if you're wearing prosthetics or a suit oh, or whatever, it's, yeah, it's really hard. But, um, yeah. but it's oh, always fun. Oh. It's always fun. <laughs> now, Peter, you know it's hot as hell in those suits when we're outside. I've heard before, but I don't know which, if you know what it's like to have an ants crawling in your ears. <laughs> it's the greatest feeling in the world. Um, and yeah, that's, that's happened. Wait, uh, Peter, you have to explain to everyone. So, I'm with his head, Mortis is head. Have to he took it all. You love the story, Seth. I'm going to tell it this for you. I do love this story. Yeah. Please, just someone <laughs> tell it. They have to know the actual story. So, Peter. I think it's like what, June, July, like uh, Los Angeles okay. gets inundated with uh, like these red, red ants <laughs> that just show up in your peanut butter, in your laundry, in your socks, in syrup, on your, uh, on your, on your soap dish. Uh, and, you know, Bortus's head, you know, they split me open to the white meat, as it were. Uh, and, you know, so my head can breathe. So, uh, so they can get some air in there, yeah. And then put some popsicle sticks, you know, so like, and they send me away to He's my... He's not joking, room. it's popsicle sticks to keep it open. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, so I can, like, my brain can breathe. Uh, I don't know if that even means, but... Uh, and send me away to go to sleep for an hour for lunch because I can't clearly go to Starbucks or like, you know, like the trailer. Let's go there, we'll bring you some food, we'll bring you a tuna sandwich in a minute. Uh, and just go to sleep and then come out and like boop, 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 boop. I, I went there, boop, meet me on set, Seth's ready to go, let's go, number, let's go. And then glue me back up and um, you walk up the stairs and you, got on, you get on the ship and you get on the bridge and you get the uniform on and everything is great and perfect and we're like, okay, team, the number one team, let's go. And then there's like, what is that? What is that? What is this? What the fuck? What, 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 what is this? No, no. So, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> and, like, you know, and then when it once, once it crawls in your ear, you're like, oh, these are ants. 
inside, glued inside the Wrapped pumpkin. Wrapped in borders, isn't it? Nobody, not 200 people around me, nobody is having this experience but me. Uh, but I'm a team player. So let's, you know, let's get the shot. I'm just gonna bang my head on the wall. What's wrong with Peter? He's just a method actor, he's a Peter guy. I don't know. He's getting into he's like, we're in for the battle scene. I'm like, I have ants literally on the brain. Uh, and they will never, I will never forget that. But hey, that was just one day. That just only happened once one time. Do you guys know what's really funny? I had only worked in the very beginning with Peter as Bordis, so I never saw him outside of Bordis. Oh, that was fun. Who and are you, <laughs> sir? Oh. <laughs> and I'm walking to my car on the box lot one day, and I'm like, he's like, night, no, Jess. And I'm like, night, never saw that dude in my life. He's a very handsome, specific look. Yeah, my name's sir. Would, he's, I'm like, he's like, it's Peter. I'm like, Bordis? No, my name's Peter. This was like weeks after, and now it's, yeah, it's so wild. Can I get an omelet? I'm sorry, background is over there, sir. Uh, I'm sorry, this is season two. You like, are you new here too? I'm, I'm, my name's Peter, I play Bordis. Uh, I got a parking space with a name on it. Uh, please have an omelet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump in and say, please, please do. Talk, my friend. Uh, talk a little bit. One of the things that's really impressed me about the movie to Hulu is the VFX. Everything seems really amped up in New Horizons. And I'm curious if you could talk a little bit about um, the VFX and pulling off what you're doing on Hulu and also the editing because the editing obviously is the final rewrite, it's where it comes together. Can you sort of talk a little bit about those aspects of the show? And suddenly everyone looks at me. Uh, well, you know. I think we've always sort of been ambitious, but this was a real chance to, to step it up, and we have an amazing VFX department, I'm gonna name check with Nazca, Brian Fayette, and then season three, Eric Hayden. And, you know, a lot of it is on the page, I mean, so, but we, on this show, get a real opportunity in which to sort of uh, completely uh, add to the, add to what's going on. Like, we have a lot of sort of say and, and agency in terms of the back stuff, and, um, you know, usually it ends up, you know, Brandon does a, 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 a full, uh, it's called pre -biz pass to the script. And it's usually long, but it's amazing in its own story in itself. Then they'll come to me, and then we'll argue about it for two weeks. I'll tell them all the things that are missing, and then they'll come back with something even more amazing. And then Seth will chime in, of course, and Seth has already sort of pre-seen it. But it, it, you know, it shows up in a lot of our stuff, like the drone sequence, I think, was one of those things that was sort of like made in the edit room and in the in the VFX um, department, and I think what you're seeing, what you saw, Domino is another one where you're going to see our combined organic power making a real special episode. So, um, yeah, no, and having the having the runtime allowing us to sort of get into the nitty gritty of the battle has really made a huge difference. Brandon, you want to add? Uh, I didn't mean, do you want to add anything? Well, I think the. the um, the visual effects in this season are the best I've ever seen on television. Oh. And the best is coming. You, there, we still have two episodes left there. That's so crazy. It went by so fast. So fast. <laughs> I was going to say, can you talk a little bit about though about the editing? room and how this show gets shaped, because obviously editing is a final rewrite. Have any episodes gone through some radical changes in ways you guys didn't expect? Radical changes? Well, I am very fortunate to work with the man on video over here and Brandon. A lot of this is actually on the page. So, and Seth, who's here, works as a film director. So we get to pour over the material in a way that I don't feel like you get to do on any television show, even other streaming shows. And the amount of being able to sort of craft the performance and 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 think about the nuances of layering of, of character development and stuff is it's we're just we're just working at this high level. I mean, I'm not working at this high level. I'm just working the machine, but we're working at this high level. And um, I, I think the biggest, probably the biggest thing, and maybe Seth can chime in or agree, is that when we saw in season two of all things the. The aftermath of the Kalon battle, and obviously that you know that was a three-minute um, battle that got expanded into seven minutes, and 
the, the sheer death and destruction and, and the, the emotionality of it all, that we realized we had to serve that story even harder. And, and I think we reacted to the fan base of it too. And I feel like, if, if anything else, that, that has set our course, uh, you know, as much as any other thing that could happen in the edit room. So that, that's one thing that really sticks out to me. And then, of course, like I said, like the battle sequences and stuff we build. Seth, I have a question for you. Uh, this week, I believe, there's a novella coming out, a digital novella that you wrote. Um, can you sort of talk about what it's about, what went into the decision to do this thing, to do, to write? Yeah, I mean, we had planned, uh, without giving too much away about the book, um, we had planned to shoot um, 11 episodes, and because of COVID, it just became impractical. And this was an episode that, for reasons that you'll see if you if you pick it up. Um, it required to shoot, we couldn't shoot it in LA. We were gonna have to shoot either in uh, you know Prague, or somewhere in Europe, or in Canada, or to, you know, try to find a location um, that would that would suit this story. And it just it just became impossible. And I, I kind of grappled with, you know, do we do we gamble for a season four and just withhold it and shoot it then? Um, because it was, it was a very experimental episode, a really experimental episode. As it, you know, if, if you choose to read the book, um, you'll see why. Uh, you know, in my mind, if we, you know, if we do wind up with uh, with more episodes of this show, it, it's theoretically something that we could still shoot. I mean, it's it's one of those ideas that's so out there and so bizarre that that it just you don't want to give it up. So I decided to just in case, you know, this was it for the Orville, um, that I really wanted to get this story out there. And so I, I wrote it as a novella. Um, I, I just don't, I don't wanna give too much away about it, but it's, it's, it's a very unique uh, episode and you'll see why when you read it, why it um, would have been so challenging to shoot. The one thing I've learned about you, Seth, and I'm sure everyone on the panel can uh, chime in is, do not spoil anything or Seth will not like it. <laughs> Joking around, obviously, but uh, guarded. Um, uh, no, I mean, look. I when, when I watch any show uh, on television that I watch regularly, I I personally try not to read any kind of summary. Or I don't want to know anything about it before I watch it that week. Even if I'm binging something that's already been on the air, I don't read I don't read the uh, episode description. I, I want to be completely surprised. And um, and I, you know. Whether erroneously or not, uh, like to think that maybe there are other people out there who watch TV the same way and, and uh, uh, su su surprise is, is everything. And you know whether it's uh, a joke that surprises you in comedy or whether it's a plot twist that uh, surprises you in a suspense or thriller or drama, it's everything. Surprise is everything in storytelling, and so we try to preserve as much of it as we can. I want to I want to ask you something real quick, Seth, and I'm gonna share this with the room because Seth said something to me the other day, which I think is special, and I think it's something that you guys should know. I've known him for a long time, almost 20 years, and we were talking about this season and how we're just very proud and impressed with this season. And I asked him something about this, and he said, and Seth, you can sort of chime in here, but you said Orville scares me. And I think that's something that's important with all the things he's done, all the sort of success he's had to come and do this show and you look at this season and how big it is. I just thought it was really sort of special for you to say that, like, this, is, this scares me, you know, and you were talking about the novella. But I just, I, I don't know, it's just, it's just something I just, I don't know if people know that about you. Yeah, it's, what scares me is getting it done in time for air. <laughs> <laughs> No, look, I mean, with, with the animated shows and with, you know, the comedies that I've done, it's like, look, it's all hard work, but it's something that at this point is, is almost a reflex muscle. I, I, I know how to do it. I can do it in my sleep in a lot of ways, and sometimes I do. <laughs> um, but, um, but with something like this, it's uncharted territory, and the, the possibility of failure is great, and that's, uh, that's much more exciting to me. I, I enjoy that at this point, Mike. Yeah. Uh, what, 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 what
We'll see. If not, believe me, I have tons of questions. No, I... Hello. Oh, look at that. Hey. Oh, that's that's right. awesome. Oh, that's green. Fine. Fine Foster, USS Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I wanted to first thank you for adding to the academic discourse on time travel. Mm -hmm. And uh, because the Orville picked up Gordon before he sent this stress call, a brand new timeline was created. Okay, okay. Here it goes. Here it goes. Here it goes. <laughs> well, listen, listen. Here's this is we listen to the fans. Yes. So you are one hundred percent correct. And everyone thought everyone thought <laughs> look, they, they must be doing that on purpose. No one could make such an egregious mistake. <laughs> And in fact, it was an egregious mistake. So, yeah. Tom and I have gone back in with the help of Jay Lee and Scott, and we've tuned it a little bit for you. Yes, <laughs> we got you. And because, yeah, this, again, this is, this is why I love interaction with fans, because you think you've covered everything, and when you're doing a thousand jobs all day, and you're trying to juggle a thousand balls, it's, you, you miss things that sometimes are right under your nose, that is one of those things. We have gone back in and tweaked it, uh, and it's thanks to the fans and their vigilance, and please keep it up, we love it. Now, my question comes on behalf of me and my fellow science teachers. Will the egg salad sandwich come back? <laughs> Did you see how mad John was? <laughs> And that's what Gordon wanted to do, put a damn yeah. sandwich. Whether, whether it did or it didn't, would you really want me to tell you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, of course you would. You're right. <laughs> <It's> spoilers. <laughs> uh, is there another? Oh, we have another question. Hey, um, I was just wondering, was there a specific inspiration or thought process when coming up with the name of the ship, the Oracle? Yeah, um, I was, you know, I was reading that McCullough biography uh, on the Wright brothers at the time, and um, there was seemed to be an undertone that maybe like Orville was sort of the scrappy do of the Wright brothers, <laughs> um, and you know, originally in, in the pilot, this the ship, the Orville, was kind of supposed to be a mid-level. Um, exploratory vessel that was by no means the flagship of the fleet, was far from it. And so it, it kind of felt like a good name um, in the context of what I was reading at the time. And, and, you know, since then, what's nice about that, since then we've told the story of its growth and it's, it's become more and more of a, of a player in, in our fictional galactic universe of politics. Um, and so it's, uh, yeah, but that was the origin of it. It was, it was uh, I just happened to be reading a book about the Wright brothers and, and, um, and uh, named the ship Orville. Can I throw one in real quick? It's just right on piggybacking on that. Um, Tova, my friend was saying to me, I just love that name, Tova. And I was like, and I'm like, where do you, how did they come up with that? So I was wondering, did you have any specifics? Um, sometimes, um, Sometimes you just put your fist down on the keyboard when you're making a <laughs> and, and you see what word comes up. So, you know, it's funny, Joel McNeely told me that, our, our fabulous composer, Joel McNeely, told me this at one point, that he, um, every once in a while, he'll just plunk his hands down on the keyboard, and whatever bizarre chord he comes up with, that'll be his springboard for what he's about to write. And, and wow. it's not that different than coming up with alien names. Wow. <laughs> nice. Uh, next question. Yeah, um, this is for the cast. Um, when uh, I saw the episode of Isaac betraying the Orville, um, I want to know how you guys reacted when you saw he was going to do that in the script. So were you guys betrayed? Like, did you feel betrayed? Were you surprised? Because it, it came kind of out of nowhere um, to me as a viewer. I was just concerned that uh, Mark would be written out of the Orville. <laughs> <laughs> Mark is getting fired. You were concerned. I call me. <laughs> so where are we going with this one? I was pleasantly surprised because it, it brought about contention and um, there was a place to go from there. So I just knew that there would be stories after that. Nice working with you, Mark. Yeah, I mean, it brought me an opportunity to come in and 
be from a different ship on the Orville. And I, I feel like, you know, not every Orville ship is the same, like just in, you know, America, like maybe every state may have different, you know, rules or whatever. So I might have come from a ship that didn't have a cane lawn and it was my first experience on a ship and that gave me an opportunity. And I hope you guys see that she grows over the season, but she definitely comes in strong with her opinion of um, him and the whole, you know, species of them. For me, it shifted Isaac's character into a different gear because he was sort of the butt of a few jokes before that, wasn't he? And I'm from Mr. Potato Head and all that. But then uh, his, uh, his, his betrayal in that sense um, made him quite a serious player uh, in the Orville. And, and yeah, the rest is history. It's been quite a journey since then, really, for Isaac. And it continues. I love the idea that, oh, you played a joke on me. I might have Kaline kill everybody. <laughs> yeah. Well, 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 the, the interesting, the crew's reaction to Isaac at the beginning of season three, once again, um, as Anne pointed out, is it's it's very different than uh, the way it was in the second half of season two. And that's a direct result, again, of comments that we read, God, a year and a half, two years ago from fans saying, wait a minute, how the hell can this guy just walk onto the bridge and take his post again um, after what's happened? And and the real reason was that we were kind of staying away from it because we just we had written all the scripts. We didn't know if you guys were going to like the two-parter or not, and it turns out you did. So we were like, shit, we we don't we gotta we gotta we don't have anything to see. Nice. So we so we uh, we built. Um, we built that into season three, and that manifests itself more than anything through Charlie, is that this attitude of, well, yeah, there, there were no consequences. Yes, he did save the ship at the end, but at the same time, he was when they were fixed in the first place. So it's, it's, uh, it's complicated. Before we actually get to the next question, just real quick, Seth, what can you actually tease everyone about the next episodes that have yet to air? <laughs> Have you heard the bloody word I've said? <laughs> I, 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 yes, yes, we all read Collider, we know your family, but for heaven's sakes, listen. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, we, there, there is a, um, there is a, a, a nice shape to the season, and we, we, all I can say is it will be, um, you'll be very, uh, Creatively satisfied by the end of the, by Will the end there be the duty? <laughs> <laughs> There'll be lots of duty. <laughs> uh, but we have another fan question. I think this is, might be the last fan question, but we'll see. Oh, wait, this, this question is for Penny. You've been traveling through space for a long time. Between, <laughs> between Isaac or Yafin, or Captain Sisko from Deep Space Nine. Who's your favorite boyfriend and your worst boyfriend? <laughs> I gotta tell you, that's a great question. Oh, and so. Okay, let me start answering that by saying this. Seth, I really want to do a season four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. <laughs> And although I love the, the actor behind uh, this wonderful character, um, the least, gosh, that's a horrible word. Um, my least boyfriend would be Yafit, but I love the interplay. I mean, that was just so lovely to be discussed with someone who was just enamored with you. Um, my favorite? I'm listening, Penny. <laughs> He used to be the hawk. <laughs> and my God, the, the chemistry that I had with Avery Brooks, I, you all know I had to hide in my dressing room because I feared I would definitely have an affair and I would not be married. <laughs> so it's Avery Brooks, it's Cisco. <laughs> What you got to say about that, man? Could it be a long bus ride home? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sad about that. Yeah, it's a long 
We're still well, Mark, he had it seven years, Mark. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but, okay, great. You're here now. I'm here now. <laughs> yeah. Forever. Uh, Seth, I actually think there is um, some news about where the Orville might be going, or might be able to be watched. Some news you might want to share. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to announce that all three seasons of the Orville uh, will be going up on Disney Plus starting August 10th. Woo! I don't, listen, I, we're basically out of time, but I, I have to ask this as a fan of the show and for everyone in this room, have, have you guys talked about doing more episodes? What, what can you say about this? Yeah, when are we going back to work, Seth? Uh. <laughs> Look, all I, all I can say is, if, it, we don't know, we don't know, it's, I, and I don't think we will know until this season finishes. I, I think um, uh, it's, it's a mystery to a lot of us. Um, particularly on, on streaming platforms, you don't, as an executive producer, you don't always know how well your show is doing. There are no Nielsen ratings that are publicized the morning after every week. We just don't know. All we can say is that if, if as many people as possible watch the show, tell your friends, um, uh, then, then I, like anything else, we have a shot. Television is, is a business, and if there is a demand for it, uh, there is certainly a desire for it on our end, so uh, we'll yes. to see. I, I would just say, when, when the show gets on Disney+, Plus, that's a huge audience, so please, everyone in the room, if you, I'm saying this just as a fan who wants more episodes, please recommend it and mention it will be on Disney+, Plus as well, get more people to watch, because I really do want you guys making more episodes. Right to Congressman. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for everyone on the road. And Seth McCoy, watch it from afar. <laughs>